You will pay. It's love, Tars. It's love. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to virtually the worst episode of Chicken and Raffles Does at the Movies. I'm Chicken and Raffles, and I'm going to talk about a movie. That That's what this one is. That's, that's what this show is. Julie and Jack is a high-concept sci-fi romantic comedy? From the guy who did the movie with the birds. I'm going to throw this out up front. Making stuff takes some amount of effort, and James Nguyen feels like a guy who likes movies and wanted his movies to be good. Having said that, he made his movies, and they're out there, and you can watch them and or pay for them, and personally, I think that's pretty cool. And now I feel free to shit all over this movie. Because I said the nice thing. The credits are fine right up until the two-minute mark when the ocarina solo kicks in for no apparent reason. This is Jack, our main character. And the first thing he does in the movie is be late to work and act like it's not a big deal and hey, it's cool. This is just like a thing I do every day. Fuck you, Jack. <laughs> Coming to work on time, asshole. Then his co-worker Bill reminds him that he sucks, which he does. And now it's a meeting. Jack's boss calls him out in front of all his cool computer chip salesman friends and gives him a stern talking to. Jack's excuse is... And his boss does that thing where I wave my hands and I don't know where they are in frame. That happens. <laughs> and now we're at Jack's friend's place, watching him sex this woman for some reason. She hears Jack at the front door and- Oh my god! Ah, holy shit, my eyes! What is happening? Okay, so Jack just went to his friend Mark's house to get asked how he was feeling, complain about work, and then be skeptical of online dating for basically no reason then proceeds to go home and start an online dating profile because he's actually just an asshole. Then we get a montage of Jack chatting with a one Lady Renegade because the Matrix, I guess? And then that's intercut with him still being kind of shitty at his job. Jack meets Mark at the wine bar to tell the audience that Lady Renegade won't give Jack any personal information, and so that Mark can be very hilarious and very cool. So Jack takes on a new customer at work, and Bill tells him, was my customer for two years and he never bought nothing. which I don't even, I don't even know how that makes any sense. If he's a customer, how is he a customer if he doesn't buy anything? Am I, am I bad at business? I don't have any money. I'm probably bad at business. And then Jack meets Julie. What? What are you saying? I can't hear you over the flowers that I bought you. I know it feels like I'm punching down, but holy fuck, this set looks like shit. Also, nerds! Fucking nerds! Nerds! Some of that might be usable. <laughs> Julie is some sort of software, blah blah, whatever, and also there might be something wrong with her mouth. And Jack is smitten. And you're lucky that's all I'm going to say about the scene because it drags on for a really long time and is boring and stupid. Back at work, now Jack isn't terrible at his job anymore for some reason. And back to romance. Just, just moving right along. Oh, cool. It's like worse Ferris Bueller. Awesome. Okay, there's this bit about Ada Lovelace, and it sounds almost like something a Star Trek character would say, except the cameraman is clearly drunk and it's not in space. So, you know. Points off for that. But also, surprisingly, this is a setup for something that's actually clever. And then and then Jack says something stupid. Because of course he does. And then there's a love montage, and I'm only pointing this out because there's this one synth line that I think might actually be worth sampling. And this is the turn. They go to see an old tree, and Jack's in this amazing sweater, and it turns out Julie's been an insane person the entire time. Oh, but Jack's too stupid to know that that's a very vampire-y thing to say on a date in the woods. Oh, and now there's some rocks. Guess how old they are. Are you a thousand years old? You gotta tell me if you're a thousand years old. Jack tries to get Julie to convince him she's not a vampire, and she's like, how about later? And Dum Dum over here is like, eh, okay. If I said that with a Chinese accent? Whoa, hey guy, that's not gonna fly in 2019. Let's... Let's not do that. 
Jack keeps trying to learn about this woman he met on the internet, which seems reasonable? She says she's just a boring human with a boring human past and will take no questions further on the matter. The creepy escalates when she, after three months of not telling anything about herself to this guy, asks if he'll love her forever, fucking moron over here saying, okay, and then going, hey, now can I know anything about you? And she's like, nah. It's great. And then fade to black. That's a, mo that's a movie thing. Back at job, Jack sells the customer who never buys anything exactly 1,000 computer chips and gets way too excited about it. Then gets the appropriate amount of excited about it. And another meeting again, only this time, Bill sucks ass and Jack's the bestest. Jack, what happened to you, man? Just what have you been eating? <laughs> Now Julie and Jack are on another date again, only this time it's the Great Gatsby, I think. Julie's just going on and on about how you can't make up for lost time and blah blah, and of course Jack just says, well none of this is real. I know none of this is real. Wait, what? Oh, they're in VR. That, sure, that makes sense. I mean, you see how advanced those fucking computer chips he's selling are? <laughs> Couldn't even say it. <laughs> Stupid. So anyway, he wants to meet an IRL, and Julie's like, nah. This goes on longer than you'd imagine, but that's basically it. Julie pieces out, and Jack jacks out of the Matrix, so he can breathe heavily over his own failure. Oh good, it's Mark again! Oh no, it's Mark again! And there it is, because it's always gotta be about Jack. Where Mark is just terrible, Jack is a terrible friend. Let's, let's get that, let's get that right. He just goes over to his friend's place to be like, Oh, hey, can you ask about me? I'm like feeling down, but I can't just like have an adult human conversation with you. He's an asshole. Jack sucks. <laughs> I mean, that's not impossible. Now Mark's having banana lunch with his mom. There's no other way to read that line. <laughs> He tries to talk about being sad, but the loudest AC I've ever heard in my life is going off in the background. She says something that's almost entirely incomprehensible. I tell you what, when you do meet her, just uh, invite her over for dinner. And once she's met you and met the family, we can all have such a good time. I bet she'd really want to get to know you more, so. And now Jack's harassing strangers, which... That's not great, Kai. And now Jack's a detective now. And now I'm 100% invested in this because nothing beats a good mystery. His only lead is the one time Julie told him that she went to Grant University. Now, obviously his first instinct is to call and try to get her address from the staff, which there's no way he thought that was going to work, right? Then he does the smart person thing and internets Julie and the game is afoot. So off to a coffee date with Julie's old professor, Pro Professor Tran. Tran makes an almost a movie reference and then talks about a neural supercomputer the size of a baseball for... And I'm just kind of pointing this out for no seemingly no reason. Also, the super nanotechnology computer neural network is what Julie's thesis was on, so... Maybe it wasn't for seemingly no reason after all. Tran is late for a doctor's appointment to get his watch-looking arm fixed, but he's got one more clue for Jack, and that's that Julie went to work for JB Software after she left college, so... Back to, back to the internet again. Jack goes to meet up with Julie's ex-business partner, and he's actually not a bad actor, so... There's, there's that. And now another Julie flashback where she's a computer wizard. Did I mention she's really good at computers? Cause they say it. A lot. Flash slightly less back, and Julie is selling JB software for exactly 100 million dollars. And now it's off to go meet a VC guy, cause... That's the next lead, let's go! It seems like Julie was trying to get funding for something called Mind Chip, which is exactly... It's a terrible name. But this is the last of Jack's clues, so now he's just... Going back home, I guess... I guess Julie's really gone now, and there, there really is no way to find her. Oh, wait, there she is. There she is. I found her. She's on the internet. So Jack goes back into the VR to ask what she's been doing for the last however long this has been going on for. 
She breaks up with him, even though she definitely loves him. He asks for a reason, and she gives him a riddle. And back into detective mode. Jack goes to Julie's old roommate's house, which is just pretty creepy. And then he asks what she was like in college, which, again, super creepy. And this leads to another flash... Another flashback. The flashback is mostly just Julie getting made fun of for doing well in school. Also, it shot really well. And then a party happens. Woo. Party. So Julie was with Party Guy until VC last heard, so... Off to go meet Party Guy, I guess. So yet another lead, and at this point, I kind of just want this to be over. Jack goes to meet Party Guy, and we get another flashback. Are you kidding me? At least this one's character development. Julie, out of nowhere, apologizes for doing computers too much and wants to travel the world or some romantic shit. And Party Guy's, like, pretty confused, which makes sense, because it just came out of nowhere. But I guess going to your sister's for dinner that one night can really change a person. She breaks it off with Party Guy, and now he's sad now. Our next lead are Julie's parents, who, I guess, live among the birds. Familiar territory for James Nguyen. Julie's mom tells Jack about how they adopted her from Russia, and that she was their hopes and dreams, and she looks like she's about to cry, like Julie's actually been dead, and Julie's actually been dead, and has been for two years, she got a brain tumor, Julie's dead! There's the twist. Gotcha. Twisted. You got, you got twisted. Julie's dead. She's been dead the whole time. Gotcha. Bet you weren't expecting that. I wasn't the first time I saw this. And then there's a flashback of Julie on her deathbed talking to her mom, and it's actually pretty sad and, like, pretty... I think it's pretty well done, honestly. When Julie's like, I'm scared. Like, of dying? That's, like, that was pretty real. And, uh, you know, good, good stuff. This is what I was talking about when I said, you know, it seems like James Nguyen isn't just, like, a f fucking idiot moron. Like, he can... Some of the stuff makes you feel things. I felt things. So where do we go from here? To Julie's grave, of course. That's... That seems not right. <laughs> Jack plugs back into virtual reality to give Julie a piece of his mind about the whole tricking him into dating a dead lady, I assume. Oh, right! But he's too dumb to understand what's going on, so now he thinks he was just being catfished the whole movie. Because he's a fucking idiot. And then, Julie drops the most amazing bombshell that's ever been put on film. Just watch this. Just, please, just watch this. It's so good. Jack, two years ago, when I was near death, I transferred my mind into this neural computer which I developed. That's impossible. Not anymore, it isn't. I have no idea how long it goes for. <laughs> That's how I make these videos. It's perfect. That's right. She's actually just a soul and brain trapped in a little floating computer orb thing from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. It is amazing. I love it. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, man. Jack says his piece and life shames Julie on accident. And now it's a Seinfeld. This sex, isn't it? That's what you're really upset about. I don't care about the sex. Okay, I care about the sex. I didn't think that, I don't think that he meant this to be this funny, but I think it's pretty funny. This drags on, but eventually Julie lets Jack off the hook, and somehow there's still more of this movie to go. And now Jack goes to church for some spiritual love. I skipped ahead 30 seconds because I figured this was gonna wrap up pretty quick, but no, it's an actual full song length song worth of song at the tail end of this movie for no reason at all. Jack gets advice from the single worst possible source in the world, Father Necrophile. And now it's another meeting again. God damn, dude. Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, would you just, would you just listen to that clap? Mm. 
fuck, dude? What the hell? Jack's the best now, and he's willing to forgive and forget. So, this is, it's gotta be the end now. Back in computer land, Julie and Jack reunite to just to live their life as long as, I guess for as long as her batteries in her little thing go for. And that's a wrap. That's how I'm going to end these from now on. And that's a wrap. Stupid. All in all, it's a sometimes entertaining effort by a guy who continues to make movies and no one can stop him. Honestly, if you shave off the business meetings and the best friend, this comes so close to reading like a Star Trek script. And, and that's something, right? A lot of what I think is bad in this movie is mostly on the technical slash movie making aspect of it. And sure, some of the writing is wonky and the pacing isn't great through the second half because it's just flashback. Go to another place, another flashback, go to another place, flashback. But it's not, it's not terrible. And there's some genuine human experience type stuff in there. And honestly, the worst, most mushy shit in this movie is no worse than the love is the fifth dimension, Tars, from Interstellar. Fucking fight me. Anyway, thanks for watching this Chicken and Ruffles does at the movies. I hope... I hope you go watch Julie and Jack. Pay money for it if you can. Go pay, pay. You will pay. It's love, Tars. It's love. <laughs> Fucking Matthew McConaughey.